This video is about the topic of iterations. Now, iterations um, is a topic that is really special when you're covered in MATLAB. It's a topic that exists in um, when you talk about all computer languages, but MATLAB is especially an interesting when it comes to iterations because there's a bit of magic going on in MATLAB in terms of when you deal with vectors. Uh, there is some MATLAB magic going on uh, in terms of iterations. A lot of stuff that we do when we do two times some vector one, five, seven, uh, you know, MATLAB just automatically does, you know, the, the, the multiplication. So it's two, ten, fourteen. Well, in a lot of languages, you don't have that. And so, um, so MATLAB sort of pulling this out of its magic hat and you have to do things called iterations which means a lot of things that we're going to cover uh, in the section on iterations um, you don't necessarily have to do it this way in MATLAB but it is worthwhile understanding iterations when you talk about this in the context of learning programming languages and there are also times in which you would want to use iterations in MATLAB. So MATLAB's built-in functions don't don't totally um, keep you from having to use iterations. So it's a topic that's very, very important and that is very needed. Um, and we'll go back and forth and look at how MATLAB's built-in functions do things um, with iterations and how you have to do some things um, outside of those built-in functions. So uh, the iterations comes in two two flavors, two parts. Uh, when you talk about MATLAB, there is the for command. Iterations are also referred to as loops. And you'll see why when we do the, the flowchart diagram. There's the for command and there is the while command. So we call these for loops and we call these while loops. So you get for loops and while loops. We're going to focus now on iteration in general, but we're going to focus specifically on for loops in this video, and then in subsequent videos, we'll talk about the while loops. So um, let's look at the for loops and introduce the concept of iterations with the for loops. So now, once again, just out with the if statement, we the if statement allows us to interrupt program flow the if and the switch. So you come down, you're doing something, and then you make a decision. And your program flows this way if something's true, and it flows this way if something's false. And then you can do and then you can do another block of code here, and a block of code here, and then you come back, and then your program continues to run with blocks of code here. So this is this is how the if or the con or the or the switch in the conditionals work. Well, iterations allow you to change program flow in the sense that it allows you to re-execute lines of code. So the general diagram, we'll get to this more specific diagram in a minute, but the general diagram is you come in to your iteration and you test for something. And if it's true, you execute some block of code and then you go back, test again, and keep doing that. So that's the true side. That's if this thing keeps going. Um, if you're done or false, and it changes a bit with um, between the while loop and the for loop, then you're done with this iteration and then you continue on with blocks of code. So if this is code, if this is code block one and this is code block two and this is code block three, then the sort of equivalent, not exact, but sort of equivalent flow diagram over here with a loop is you would do some code block here, some code block here, and then you would come here, set up your iteration here, whether it be a for or a while, and then you would go through that iteration until your condition is either false or, in case of the for loop, you're done. And when you're done, then you just continue on flow with the rest of your program. So this, this whole thing about doing things over and over again, this is the concept and this is why they call them looping. This is why they call them loops. So this is the loop over and over. And then when you're done with the loop, then you come out of the loop and then you continue on with your code blocks uh, and your, your program continues to flow. So this is how iterations alter the flow of the program as opposed to the way conditionals over here alters the flow of the program. So let's now look a little bit deeper at the flow diagram for 
um, the for statement. Uh, once again, I'll, I'll do what I just did before. You have some code block here, and maybe it's some code block here. So you're coming along, executing your program code sequentially, and then you hit a for statement. And the way the for statement is set up is uh, your for some variable, which I'll say var, V-A-R, some variable equals some vector. Some variable equals some vector. Okay? And so, and then while that variable uh, goes down that vector, and I'll explain a little bit more in a second, you execute this code block. When you finish executing that code block, you go back up here to the for loop, and if you're not done, you continue to go through here. Okay. Once you're done, and I'll explain what that means in a second, once you're done, then you exit the loop, what we call exit the loop, and continue executing whatever block of codes, blocks of code that you're going to do after the loop. Okay. Now, a little bit more detail here. Let me let me write this a little bit better. This is a variable v a r. Uh, so let's just say we had some variable x, and it is equal to some vector. Let's go for 34, 18, and no, 27. Okay, so. Uh, your variable is equal, your variable x is equal to some vector 34, 18, and 27. Okay? So now when you come down, you're executing this code block, you execute this code block, you hit the for loop. When you hit the for loop, x is going to equal the first value in that vector, which in this case, or your variable is going to equal the first value in that vector. In this case, x is variable x is going to equal the number 34. So when you get over here and you start executing the inner part of the for loop, x is going to be equal to 34 the first time through the for loop. Then when you get back and you finish executing whatever code you have within your, code, your, your for loop, you're going to come back up. Now x is going to equal the next value in the vector, which in this case is 18. So the second time through, x is going to equal 18. You're going to come through, execute this code block, come back up, then x is now going to equal the third value in this vector. In this case, it's 27. So x is now going to equal 27. You're going to go through, do this code block, come back up. Now, the vector is that you've reached the end of the vector, so x has nothing more it can equal to, so now you are done. And once you're done, you come down, and now you go to the next code block um, in, your, in your script or your function. So your for loop is done, and it's now exited, and you come out, and you now execute these code blocks. So that is how a for loop works. Okay, uh, That is the basic form of a for loop. Once again, you're executing code block, you're executing code block, you're coming through your function or your script, you're executing your code sequentially, you get to a for loop. It is for some variable equals some vector. In this case, in this example, variable x equals the vector 34, 18, 27. So now, when you hit it the first time, x is equal to the first value in this vector. So come through, x is equal to 34. You execute the code block that's inside the for loop. You go back up. Now x equals the next value in the vector. In this case, that value is 18. So now x equals 18. You come through. You execute the code block inside the for loop. You go back up. Now x equals the next value in the in the vector, which is 27. So now x equals 27. You go through, you execute this code, code inside the for loop, you come back up, you've reached the end of your vector, x is equal to everything in the vector, your variable is equal to everything that's in the vector, so now you are done, and then now you exit out of the for loop and continue on executing your code blocks in sequence. So that is the general basic way that a for loop works. Next up, we're going to look at some examples um, that I'm going to do here on the board, and then I'm going to do those same examples in MATLAB.